Today we're going to talk about Malfeasance 2.0 and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here, welcome to Guardian Watcher. So, let's talk about Malfeasance 2.0. But before we get into the video, if you haven't already entered into the Destiny 2 Forsaken Annual Pass giveaway for the month of November, then click on the link in the description box below for your chance to win. Also, I will be announcing all of the details to the prizes for the December 2018 Destiny 2 Forsaken giveaway at the end of this video. And if you are watching this video, then welcome to my second YouTube premiere video. Don't be afraid to come and chat with me as well as everybody else when this video actually launches. Now, let's actually get back to the Malfeasance. So about a little over three weeks ago, I did a review on the exotic hand cannon Malfeasance and in that review, I expressed how bad it was or at least how bad it was outside of Gambit. To save you time, if you would like to check out that review before watching this video, then you could do so by clicking on the annotation at the top right of the screen or at the end of the video. If not, no worries. Anyway, prior to update 2.0.5, which launched yesterday, October 30th, 2018, the Malfeasance, I feel, was terrible. Many would agree that the damage was way too low. And I felt that the five shots in order to get the intrinsic perk explosive shadow to activate was way too much And even then I felt that the tainted slugs that burrowed into the enemy should be doing dot damage or damage over time Unfortunately, they didn't if you don't know what changes came in update 2.0.5 Then I will put a link to it in the description below the taken predator perk seemed very lackluster and all around the malfeasance felt like a very terrible weapon to use in PvE, in PvP, and even in Gambit. And that's where it was supposed to shine. At that time, the malfeasance just felt like an exotic that you hunted for just to really end up in your vault because there were better options to use. But with update 2.0.5, I definitely would say that so much of this weapon has changed. First off, Bungie had increased the detonation damage of Explosive Shadow, and then they also increased the damage against the Taken and Invaders. Even though this change didn't seem like much, you can definitely tell the difference from pre-update 2.0.5 to post-update 2.0.5. This hand cannon is amazing in Gambit now, and it's hard for me to put it down. It is still a one-shot headshot to all low-level enemies that don't have a shield, and it three-taps red bar enemies with a shield. Now, as of its stats, they haven't actually changed at all. So, it still has an impact of 78, a range of 46, stability and reload of 82, a handling of 36, with a magazine of 15. The hidden stats are also the same, with a zoom of 14, an inventory size of 57, an aim assist of 50, and a recoil direction of 98. All that information actually came from destinytracker.com if you guys want to check it out. As for its perks, for the intrinsic perk we have Explosive Shadow, which shoot tainted slugs that burrow into the enemy, stacking enough slugs causes them to explode, then we have Corkscrew Rifling, Extended Mag, Taken Predator, which bonus damage against Taken enemies and Gambit Invaders, and then last but not least we have Heavy Grip. One of the current uh, ornaments that come with it is called Aim to Misbehave, and this is what it actually looks like, and this is what the weapon looks like without the ornament. Not gonna lie, I actually like the uh, ornament a lot better. Now, given the nerf to the Sleeper Simulant with update 2.0.5, which is that they actually nerfed how much ammo you get from a power brick, I would say that this hand cannon is definitely worth taking up your exotic slot. If you want, you can replace your sleeper with another linear fusion rifle like the Man of War or the Crooked Fang 4FR. Both aren't affected by the sleeper nerf, which is amazing. Personally, I'm sticking with the rocket launcher, but many people are trying to get a forsaken roll on the Crooked Fang with projection fuse, which increases the range, opening shot, box breathing or rampage, and a master worker range. But you can really use any power weapon you like. Like I said earlier, the Malfeasance is amazing, like way better after the update. I really cannot stress this enough, but to call the Malfeasance OP is a little bit of a stretch. It is amazing in what it's supposed to be used for, which is in Gambit against invaders or against taken enemies. 
I mean, yeah, you could bring it into PvE, but there are still better options. And I still wouldn't bring the Malfeasance into PvP and think it'll dominate because it won't with all the Trusts, Luna's Howls, and Not Forgotten's running around. Not to mention any of the other meta weapons. I feel that Bungie should have changed the Taken Predator perk so that it reads, Bonus damage against Taken enemies, Gambit invaders, or while you invade. Adding the while you invade would make a huge difference with this exotic and I think that it would get a lot more gameplay. If you do not have the Malfeasance, then you definitely should get one. And given that this week is double XP for your Infamy rank, it'll definitely help out a lot. I know it's easier said than done, but with the increased spawn rate of the Ascended Primeval, it should be a little bit easier. And since the update, I have actually seen the Ascended Primeval once, but a friend of mine actually got it four times earlier today, so it definitely does spawn. Unfortunately, at one point, when I seen it the second time, I had terrible, terrible blueberries on our team, and one even went AFK when the Malfeasance was present, so we weren't able to kill it. This is why I feel that you should never go into Gambit by yourself. A full team that can communicate in Gambit is so much better, and if you are all using the Malfeasance, then stacking Explosive Shadow with Taken Predator on the Primeval does an insane amount of damage. Just make sure you kill both of the witches first in order to get the buffs before you damage the primeval. So what do you guys think about the Malfeasance? Let me know your experiences with it before and after update 2.0.5 in the comment section below. Now as for the Destiny 2 Forsaken giveaway for the month of December, we will have 4 winners. Yes, 4 winners. Two of the winners for the giveaway for December will receive a Destiny 2 Forsaken Cade 6 Last Stand statue and then the other two winners will get the Destiny 2 Forsaken Annual Pass. Also, the K6 statues will only be available to those who are in the USA, while the Destiny 2 Forsaken Annual Passes will be available for anyone outside of the USA. And this Destiny 2 Forsaken December contest will go live on November 1st, 2018 up until November 30th, and the link to the contest will be in every video for November, including this one, until November 30th. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to watch these videos as well. You never know, you just might like them. And if you do, leave a like, share them, and then come back for more, because you know you want to. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, less guns doesn't mean less crime. And I will see you guys next time.